ESPN as we continue our commitment to the Bee Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Tonight, it's the Pittsburgh Panthers taking on the South Florida Bulls. Under the lights here at Raymond James Stadium. The final Big East matchup of the season for these two teams. On senior night, some nearly 30 seniors playing nearly their final game here for the University of South Florida. Here's what's at stake for the Panthers. A win tonight, and they would become bowl eligible with their sixth of the season. They've won four consecutive games against South Florida. And so much riding in so many different ways on this game for Pitt. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, chopping it up with Brock Ewer down on the field. Quint Kesnick joining us in just a few moments. Brock, the Pittsburgh football program has experienced a lot of instability and a lot of turbulence over the last several years, but how big would a bowl berth be for first-year head coach Paul Christ? A lot of that instability has been around that senior class. It's seen four coaches come through the door there, and the great thing about Paul Chris is he clearly knows what he wants to do. Even though he's a first-time head coach, he comes from Wisconsin, and he has a clear identity. When you watch this game tonight, if you're familiar with Big Ten football and what the Badgers have done, Paul Christ and Brett Bielema built a lot of that in, in Madison. So it's going to be heavy run, heavy play action. He's got a redshirt senior quarterback that's much more comfortable in this system with his skill set than he was Todd Graham's the season ago. Here you see a good shot of Sinceri. 18 touchdowns, just two interceptions for Tino this season. It would be imperative for these seniors to finish strong and get to that bowl game. Well, Pitt won the toss, electing to receive. So they're going to start off with the football. Pittsburgh coming off a win last week against Rutgers. Meanwhile, South Florida has lost its last two in a row. And for the South Florida Bulls, this game important in different ways, especially when the hot spotlight searing right now on their head coach, Skip Holtz. They've undergone a lot of injuries this year at key positions. They've had a over 40 players start a game at some point or another this year and still trying to battle through. Back deep into the end zone, Jones will take a knee and it'll come out. First down and 10 for the Panthers. You know, Sinceri, the starting quarterback, completing 66% of his passes on the season. Has 18 touchdown passes this year compared to just two interceptions. And the number that really jumps off the page at you is the 245 attempts without an interception. That spans about eight games. That's what you'd expect out of a guy making his 38th consecutive start. And because of that, he'll protect the ball. He'll take sacks rather than to put that ball in danger. And you're looking at the South Florida defense with just two interceptions on the entire season. Two tight ends and a single back set. Graham with nowhere to go. And brought down at the 21-yard line. Ray Graham, the 5'9 senior, brought down by Sager and Giddens on the play. But Ray Graham, a big part of the success of this offense, right? Has a shot just 13 months removed from reconstructive surgery on that knee. We all watched him against Notre Dame, his breakout game this season. But he's got to get help up front. When Pitt has had success in their five wins, it's their ability to run and set up that play pass. When they've struggled, it's looked a lot like first down right there. Sinceri rolls out and finds his man at the 28-yard line complete to Mike Shanahan. Hey, uh, Quint, uh, South Florida isn't the only team that's been hit by injuries, huh? No, Pitt's uh, playing tonight without Cameron Sadler. Had a stinger last week, but actually did not make the trip because of disciplinary reasons. They'll miss him mostly in the return game. You saw Ronald Jones returning that opening kickoff. Devin Street is in the lineup. He injured his ribs last week against Rutgers. He warmed up well. He's got rib guards on. He looks good to go. All right, they're looking at a third down and seven. You can expect pressure. Street is their leading receiver. Sinceri pulls it down, gets down. He's brought down apparently a little bit short of the first down, depending on the spot here. D.D. Lattimore making the stop on the play, and it's fourth down coming up. Pittsburgh will punt. You're going to see this from South Florida tonight. I promise you this is a defensive unit that you watch on tape and you try to figure out how they're three and eight and giving up big plays like they have because you'll see series of three and out and three and out and three and out where consistently they look good and then they're wildly inconsistent blowing coverages they have got to play fundamental football for four quarters tonight Yaklik punting 
Takes a Pittsburgh bounce out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Bulls now. Matt Floyd, the quarterback number 11 right there, the 6'1 redshirt freshman, making his second consecutive start. Completing 54% of his passes on the season. That's what he did last week against Cincinnati. How difficult for a redshirt freshman coming in this late, getting just a second no, it's start? A, it's a great challenge, and a great challenge for any program. You find me a program that's on their third quarterback in the season, you're going to find me a program that's 3-8, and eight, exactly the struggle the Bulls find themselves without their marquee guy, marquee guy, B.J. Daniels. He completes his first pass, does, and Floyd gets it to his man out of the backfield. Evan Landy, the former quarterback. And actually the backup quarterback tonight as well, as you see him hobbling a little bit. He's been battling an ankle injury, missed the last two games. But if something were to happen to the redshirt freshman, that would be the guy in, the number four quarterback on their roster. Running play didn't have anywhere to go for Demetrius Murray, brought down immediately by Aaron Dan Donald. And there's a look at the quarterbacking uh, litany of guys that have been through. B.J. Daniels is the number one guy, was until he was injured November 3rd against Connecticut. He was completing 57% of his passes. There he is on the sidelines. He still has a cast or a boot on his foot. And then Eveld came in, and they uh, used up a year of his eligibility in just a few plays. That one picked off at the 30-yard line. Jason Hendricks returns it to the 21. In and out of the hands of Andre Davis. And on the second attempted pass, they turn it over. That's interception number five for Hendricks on the season. He is the team leader, and that's the play you got to make. That's the young guy, Andre Davis, the true sophomore that they're counting on in one-on-one -on -one situations to win tonight. A perfect throw, no. But when it's on your hands, you have got to come down with it. Instead, the opportunistic Hendricks, well, he adds to his interception total. Working with a short field now at the 21-yard line. It's there, the fifth-year senior. Looking at first down and 10. Backs lining up out of the eye. Ray Graham gets the call, trying to bounce it outside. Nowhere to go. He's blocked down at the 24-yard line. The turnover margin, a big story coming into this one. Pittsburgh with a big edge. Injuries, quarterback problems. Good look at Chris Kosh right there. His defensive unit has not been able to take the ball away at all on their side. Just nine takeaways the entire season, two interceptions. First-year coordinator comes from Kansas State, and there have been lots of issues on his side of the ball finishing, but more than anything indicative, the inability to get those takeaways. Here's Graham again. This time finds a hole and plows his way down to the 14-yard line. It sets up a third down and two. Let's take a look at the impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Graham quicker than he is fast, just 13 months removed from that ACL injury. Shanahan looks like a tight end. He's a big body target they like to post up. Aaron Donald, you've already seen him with a tackle for loss. His engine never stops. And Jared Hawley, like his buddy Hendricks, two experienced safeties they tend to keep everything in front of them for Pitt. Out of the three receiver formation on third down and three. Sinceri, a quick drop, gets his man, Devin Street. The first down at the five yard line. He's their clutch receiver. Coming into the game, picks up nine and a first and goal now for Pitt. How would you characterize what Pitt does offensively, real quick? They are a run play action, and then situations like that where they make it simple for Sinceri to take care of the football. Rid of it quick and found his receiver first and goal. Carswell in motion and a flag down on the play. Number 86, five yard penalty, first down. JP Holtz, the perpetrator. And they do a really good job of taking care of the ball overall. You see the, the graphics there for Paul Christ, and that's a Wisconsin philosophy. You're going to play this style of ball, well, you better not get penalized, and you better take care of the football, win the turnover margin. Those are staples of Badger football. As I said earlier, building the identity, doing a nice job getting his Panthers to understand that. First and goal back at about the 10 now. Pass complete. Stopped up at the 7-yard line, Devin Street again. And his helmet came off. Means he'll have to come out of the game. That's not a guy that you want at the sidelines. 
especially this close to the goal line. You see the rib protection, protection on. Quentin was talking about it earlier. The bruised ribs knocked him out of the game a week ago. But fully ready in this perfect temperature to play football. A little warmer in South Florida than it is Pittsburgh this time of year. <laughs> Ray Graham, the tailback. Carswell in motion. It's Graham. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped up right around the five yard line. Picked up two. Third down and goal. So you've passed it. You've run it. Are we looking at four down territory with a bull bit on the line here to six win? I don't think so. I think as much as South Florida struggles, Paul Chris is going to get points. But more than anything, he's probably thinking his two big targets here. You asked me earlier about their offense. It's Shanahan 87 and Street 15. Those two dominate their receptions, and they really like to use their height and their length to win in one on one situations. Street at the top of your screen there. It's all of 6 4. Shanahan right in the slot there on that third and goal marker. Out of the shotgun, Sinceri finds his man, but short of the goal line and a flag down. That was Shanahan brought down by Jaquez Jenkins. Let's wait and see what this flag is about. Personal foul. Illegal hands at a phase. Defense. Number six. Half the distance of the goal. Automatic. First down. Wow, that's a big penalty against Kayon Webster. Devon Webster, pardon me. There he is. And he's their senior. He's their best player, their leading tax tackler, actually, from the corner spot. He likes to be aggressive. He can't get the hands to the face. Hmm. The official was right there and saw it. You heard me right. Leading tackler is a cornerback. <laughs> that's problematic. I thought that was a typo when we saw it in the stats. South Florida had a tough time getting lined up. Graham straight ahead and touchdown Panthers. Got a nice block up front from the right tackle, Matt Rotherham. And Pittsburgh takes the lead on Graham's 10th rushing touchdown of the season. As he continues to climb the charts in the pit record book as well. That's old school power football. That's exactly what Paul Christ wants to recruit to. He feels like he can. Western Pennsylvania. Get those big uglies to just get some movement. Running back to finish. The extra point is good in Pittsburgh with a 7-0 lead. Taking advantage of that interception, working with a short field and converting. Ray Graham trying to take his team to a bowl game again. Back with more on the other side.
ESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Welcome back, everyone, to Tampa, Florida. Pittsburgh leading South Florida 7 0, just underway here in the first quarter. Ray Graham able to score the touchdown. They were able to convert on that interception. One more touchdown. He gets up to fifth all time in the history of Pitt, tying Shady McCoy. LaShawn McCoy there in Philadelphia. A guy that I don't know if he's quite as versatile or as explosive as LaShawn, but Graham coming back from that knee injury. 13 months removed, getting healthier and healthier and better and better. Took the knee brace off against Notre Dame. And been a nice ride ever since. This is Marcus Shaw on the kick return. Shaw has the kicker to beat and one other guy. And the ball came out loose. No signal yet. Shaw had a great return going all the way down to the pit 40. Bennett ripped it out and the Bulls retain possession. A little bit of a scare there. That's what Paul Chris said when his team's like a box of chocolates. He, he doesn't even know what he's going to get. They capitalize on the turnover and score the touchdown. They turn around, they kick it off, and the special teams unit marked that when I asked Paul Chris this week on the call, what about your special teams? And he said, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem right now. Hanging on with a lack of depth, and you see that appearance. And a good kickoff return there by South Florida. This 38-yard return. On first down, this is Murray trying the left side of that offensive line, brought down by Aaron Donald. Donald making a stop, one of the more dynamic players on defense, and you like what he does inside to disrupt. Huh? He is amazing to watch on tape. You project into the next level. He's a junior that may may have a shot. He's kind of a tweener at the pro game, but at this level, there's nothing in between. He is the third leading tackler, the third leading tackler from that D tackle spot, and explosive in the middle of the line. On second and nine, Floyd under duress, and he almost threw an interception to Donald. And Donald disappointed, but there's a reason why he's a defensive tackle. Shane Gordon with good pressure on the quarterback, Matt Floyd, here. A season ago, he played in a lot of different spots in Todd Graham's defense. This year, they've got him right there at the three technique on the edge of a guard so he can do damage. That's a screen pass, and that's a redshirt freshman with the inability to just throw it away earlier. Nearly catastrophic. Third and nine, and a blitz coming by Pitt. Floyd competes the pass. Down to the 25-yard line to Sean Price. And a pickup of 13. That's going to be a matchup we've got to watch with those, those tight ends and those inside receivers, correct? That's exactly right. That's where South Florida feels like in Price, as Quinn was talking about in the open. He's a difference maker. He's an Under Armour All-American. He's the way they're supposed to look. And they're going to like him underneath against his own coverage. Quick bubble screen complete to number 15, Victor Mark. Got a couple of yards. Got two on the play. Brought down by... Kayvon Williams. Second down and eight. That's Murray. And Murray gets it inside the 20 to the 19. Todd Thomas making a stop on the four yard game. Looking at third and about four coming up. What do you like? And this is a big first quarter. You know, what, what you like here is that matchup we just talked about. Because they've got Tagli and Eddie, the nickelback in. You're looking at him right in your screen right there. That's number 12. That's Sean Price, the freshman. They feel like can win in one on ones. Big target at 6'3, 240. They come to his buddy, number 83, Deontay Welsh. And Welsh sets up a first and goal from the seven, working against Pitts on the play. And it's a 12 yard gain. Skip Holtz told us that his young quarterback doesn't let a mistake get in the way. And look at the soft coverage here by Pitt outside. And Lafayette hits the redshirt freshman at the bottom of the screen. And on third and four, that is just simply too easy. First and goal. And it's Murray again. He's going to be stopped up. Gain of about one or two on the play. This first quarter is really important. And this response from South Florida really critical for Skip Holtz. With everything we talked about and all the injuries and all the struggles and the early turnover, 
This is gut check time. This is where you need your team to respond. This is a good drive capitalizing on the excellent kickoff return. Second and goal coming up. They're going to run it again, and nothing doing up the middle for Demetrius Murray. He got stuffed by number 45, Shane Hale. No gain on the play. Looking at third down and goal now. Just 25% their last eight trips. Just a little over 50% on the season. That's not winning football. That's the problem when you've had some identity issues, different system, different quarterbacks, young guys, lots of movement on your offensive line as well. Ninth play of the drive. Third and goal. Floyd with time got picked. And there's green grass ahead for Todd Thomas with just a quarterback to beat. And Floyd saves a touchdown with a tackle. But Pittsburgh with its second interception already. And Skip Holtz trying to settle down his young redshirt freshman quarterback. And Pittsburgh trying to be opportunistic one more time with another interception here in the first quarter. Back with more after this. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Grab your friends, bring your IDs. If you're 21 or over, it's Miller time. As always, a very poignant and emotionally stirring senior day. And today was the day here for DJ Daniels and his fellow senior class. Meanwhile, look at the redshirt freshman Matt Floyd getting coached up a little bit after his second interception. What do you say to a young quarterback on the sidelines at the time? Like exactly that? what Skip told him two weeks ago when he threw a pick as well. That a reminder that our guys are in the dark jerseys and you can never, ever be that late throwing out to a running back. It's interesting. He pointed out that ball start after the offense. Number 74, five yard penalty, first down. After the interception that Floyd threw against Miami, he settled down and actually played a pretty good game. Showed some resilience. And the first one's tough. He throws an in cut just a little bit wide, but off of the hands is it his receiver. And that time, that's experience. And there's no substitute. You're looking at Tino Sinceri, 37 starts under his belt. He turned it over his first two years as well. Sinceri finds his man at the 43 yard line, his tight end. Pardon me, wide receiver Mike Shanahan. And uh, let's go downstairs to Quint for more on the quarterback on the other side. Yeah, Mark, uh, his teammates, Floyd's teammates, have been really positive with him since throwing that pick. Had a long discussion with Skip Holtz. They, they were talking about reading those that particular route. Uh, at the end of the conversation, which lasted over about a minute, Holtz smiled, Floyd smiled. I, I think they realized that this kid's their best option, and they're stuck with him, good or bad. Only option. Yeah, best and only. On second and five, Sinceri with a play fake. Had the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, and he had his receiver, J.P. Carswell, but Ryan Giddens got those hands up. Richard Jr., maybe their best pass rusher, effective on this play drop. Second team all big, big East a year ago, and he gets chipped by the tight end coming out. You do what you're supposed to do. If you can't get home, find a way to time it up, get your hands up. 
Giddens a difference maker. Giddens a guy that's got a body and a, and, and a skill set that projects to the next level. He just got to bring it down in and down out. I talked earlier about that consistency throughout. He's one of the fellas that needs to do it. That was the first incompletion by Sinceri after five straight completions. And he's back on track with that pass to Shanahan. And Shanahan turns it upfield a little bit, pushed out of bounds in South Florida territory. A 15 yard gain on the play. And he still hasn't thrown an interception. That's not easy to do. Because you've already seen tonight for the youngster Floyd, you can throw a good pass off the hands of your receiver, it goes the other way. And Tino's been sharp. As I said earlier, fits a lot better within this system than he did a year ago trying to run the zone read up tempo Todd Graham style. Donald Jones in motion, but they hand it off. And this is Ray Graham. Nice gain of about five or six on the play. Let's go back to that interception statistic when Sinceri. Sometimes numbers can be a little misleading. Does that mean that he's just not a risk taker? Is he ultra conservative? Or how legit do you take that number on face value? Remember what Russell Wilson did a season ago for Paul Chris at Wisconsin? It is it is systematic. And when you have a system that is run heavy play pass, you find your outlets and your check downs. Russell set the all time record in the history of college football 37 touchdowns and four picks. So this style helps. He is on the move this time. And he's going to be sacked back at the 40. Watch the ball. He gave it away, and Pittsburgh looks like they got it back. Kayvon Webster ripped it loose. He was blitzing on the play. But Pittsburgh fortunate to get it back here. And 100 in the college football taking sacks. That's now 31 on the season. This one you got to eat. Everything is going your way in the first quarter. As a veteran guy, you don't have it. You've got positive field position. And frankly, you're not a, a dynamic, athletic running quarterback. You just got to simply live to play third down, throw that one away early. But that's some of the trade off. He, he doesn't force it. You asked earlier some of the risk that he takes or doesn't take. He at times takes some of those sacks rather than throw it away or force something down the field. A loss of 29 on the play. Run it. Isaac Bennett. And he's going to be stopped up short of the first down. Tackle. Yvonne Webster. Man, that one really stings. That one hurts. Had a good chance to catch up with Paul Christ on the field and and a guy that uh, that has some ties to Mike Riley through and through and praises him at every turn. And he's telling Tino exactly what he told me pregame. I don't care. I don't know. I, I don't care what you saw, Tino. Just simply throw that ball away. I'll tell you what, after that Ray Rice third down conversion in the NFL last week, I was expecting a little magic from Bennett. <laughs> Unable to get all the yardage. And this punt going to be down inside the 20 yard line. Did he get the first down? No, he didn't. <laughs> Ray Rice right. did. Yeah. <laughs> trying to stay in the same conference. You know, look for a theme. Rutgers, Big East.
Folks, coverage of Monday Night Football continues on ESPN at 6.30, Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's, and at 8.30, NFC East Rivals Clash. Eli Manning in New York taking on RG3 and the Redskins. New York against Washington, Monday at 8.30 on ESPN. First and 10 for South Florida. And he got stripped again. Fumbled. Shane Hale was there. And it's Pittsburgh football. Matt Floyd, another turnover. His third of the game. And that in a nutshell, that is a snapshot of their season so far. What's the adage when it rains? Of course. You're now minus 18, and Skip Holtz is doing the best he can to remain calm and patient on that sideline. Because they don't have any other options. You have a backup tight end that's your only other option. As you see that ball squirts out again. And Thomas aware of it. The interception earlier. The fumble recovery there. Russell Shell now in the backfield for Ray Graham. Shell takes the handoff. Makes it down to the 20-yard line. Shell a pretty good understudy for Graham. He was one of the top rushers in Pennsylvania high school football history. You think of all the great backs that have come out of Pennsylvania, especially Western PA. That's saying a lot. 44 games over four years of his high school career. That kid averaged 204 yards a game. <laughs> That's sick. Same high school as Tony Dorsett broke his records. He's a big physical kid. And he's he is prototypical for what Pitt wants to do long term. Second down and six out of the offset eye. Here he is again. Turning it north-south, getting down to the 16-yard line is Shell. Brought down by Giddens. Got three on that play. It'll be third down and about three to go. Are we running? Are we passing? Well, you got everything open to you here. And what you want to do, most importantly, is take advantage once again. When you've got a team down and struggling, and in their place on senior night, if you can get 14 on the board against this South Florida crew, that is a daunting task to come back from. Look at Shanahan in the slot. They like that matchup. Big guy number 87. They come over the middle, and it's complete. First down catch by J.P. Holtz. And Holtz gets inside the 10 for the seven-yard gain. It sets up a first and goal for the Panthers. They're going to take this one to the other end probably. Pittsburgh coming in at five and six overall. That sixth win would send them to their fifth consecutive bowl game. And with a lot of big football games tonight, can you imagine if that 33-yarder mm. instead of wide right in Notre Dame? I think we'd be talking a little different story tonight about these Pitt Panthers. Back with more on the other side.
back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Miller Lite. As we get ready for the start of the second quarter, Pittsburgh leading 7 to nothing, looking for their sixth win of the season and bowl eligibility. Knows the ball on the nine yard line. The Panthers have already converted a touchdown off a previous interception by South Florida. Trying to get another one here after the fumble by the redshirt freshman quarterback, Matt Floyd. We got a flag down. Legal substitution offense. 12 players breaking the huddle. Five yard penalty. First down. How does that happen after a timeout there, Brock? <laughs> That's Hewitt? exactly what Paul Christ is asking his staff. How in the world after the first quarter break can you allow that to happen? That shouldn't. They push the ball back to the 15 yard line. First and goal. You've got your two best receivers to the bottom of the field here. Pass complete. Tinker with the catch. And let's go downstairs to Quinn. DN Ryan Giddens from South Florida not in the ball game right now. Taken in the locker room for x-rays. His right hand caught between two helmets. So they're missing the big guy inside right now. How does that affect them? <laughs> Added to the list, unfortunately. Because he is their most consistent and best pass rusher as well. Second and goal. Carswell in motion. Give it to the freshman. Shell gang tackle brought down at about the eight yard line. Barrington leading the way, a gain of one on the play. So it's a third down and goal. Tell us about the battle in the trenches here. Well, the numbers you yes, asked earlier, do they always tell the story with turnovers and Tino Sinceri's interception? Those numbers are pretty clear. Now, Pitt isn't as athletic as they're going to be down the road within this style and within this system, but they've got the girth, they've got the size. You substitute. Giddens out. He's 6'3 and 270 on the edge as well. And you can expect plenty of heavy run tonight. Shanahan in the slot. Over the middle. Incomplete at the three yard line. Intended for Ronald Jones and batted away nicely by Webster. And Sinceri comes up hobbling as the field goal unit trots onto the field. There's nothing he could do there. He took a good shot. He's a tough kid, 37 straight. You'd expect that out of a Pittsburgh Catholic kid. That's a smart play. The worst thing you can do, turn it over. And here comes the area in the field and the, and the unit here, in particular with special teams, most concerning to his head coach. Kevin Harper with a field goal from point blank range, 25 yards out. And he knocks it through. But Pitt fans will always think about the one that got away, the one that Harper missed. He can make part of it go away with a win here tonight. Back with more after this.
ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper Tech. 10 full calories, 23 flavors. Welcome back, everyone, to Tampa, Florida. One of the jewels of Central Florida. Uh, Pittsburgh leading the hometown Bulls right now, 10 to nothing. Just underway here in the second quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Brock Hewitt. Been catching it down on the field. You the sideline reports. Pittsburgh has converted twice now on two turnovers by the Bulls. The Bulls have turned it over three times and all in the game. On the return it's Marcus Shaw. And Shaw tripped up at the 28 yard line as we go back to Wendy in the studio. What's good, Wendy? Mark, thank you. What's good is the SEC championship. The winner, of course, moves on to face Notre Dame for a national championship. A.J. McCarron airs it out to Amari Cooper, 32-28. Under a minute to play, Georgia has the ball. It sounds like they need a miracle right now. First and ten. South Florida just needs to find a way to take care of the ball. Two turnovers on the last two snaps. See how the Redford freshman responds. They play it safe and hand it off. Marcus Shaw between the tackles. He was injured in week one, missed the next two weeks. But back in a roll and back up to full speed in the last two thirds of the season. And I talked to you about Aaron Donald earlier. Look at him here, manning up. That's a double team, staying square. And then he just is so cat quick to finish those tackles. The go go gadget arms, incredibly productive. They fake the fly sweep, and Matt Fuller keeps it himself. Gains about two on the play, sets up a third down and about three to go. And this is some of the challenge for Skip Holtz, is not only does he not have another option, unfortunately right now they're not at a run game standpoint where they can line up and take the pressure off of a redshirt freshman quarterback. This is still a style that is a zone read B.J. Daniels offense trying to fit this young kid's skill set into it and having a hard time. Third and four. Underneath complete. Out near midfield to Sean Price. And there again is the strategy, Brock, that you mentioned. Them trying to take advantage of that, that inside game. This is a game of matchups. And a nice job there by offensive coordinator Todd Fitch. He told us very clearly, this is the one element we feel good about. Our young tight end, our slot players on this underneath coverage of pit. Handed off this time to Marcus Shaw, brought down by Shane Hale. Gain of three on the play. Pass complete on the receiver's screen. Floyd finds his man and a first down. Great effort by Victor Mark. And they seem to be getting a little bit of rhythm now, bro. And you're seeing it. You're seeing it in, in the middle of the field. This, this is where, and, and until Pitt stops it, you continue to take what's there. No need to go outside. No need to chunk it down the field. These option routes, these bubble screens, high percentage, less risky throws for the youngster. Patriots Murray back in off the fake. Going up top. Floyd. Incomplete. Intended for Andre Davis. Cut it out of bounds. That's both receiver and quarterback. Your receiver has got to do a better job, Andre, of getting on top of that corner. If you're drifting to the sideline and drifting and drifting, you don't give your quarterback any opportunity to keep you in the field of play either. Second and ten. They set up the screen and it's incomplete. Tipped off the hand of Shane Hale. Intended for Murray. So it'll be third and ten in a blink. Matt Floyd with coaches say he's got a quick release. Stepped up in that Miami game, which earned him a lot of uh, huddle credibility, so to speak. Still learning the nuances, some of the final reads in the offense there. On third and ten. Floyd sacked back at the 43 yard line by Brian Murphy. And it's fourth down. I don't think you have any option now with the sack there. I think if you could have got to a more manageable fourth down situation, maybe looking at four down territory. 
And instead, this is the learning curve, and it's hard to do. You're sitting here at three and eight. You're sitting here with what should be a veteran team for Skip Holtz. It's been completely decimated with injuries. And not only this is hard. Not only DJ Daniels, but we didn't even mention Lindsey Lamar, one of their best tailbacks. He went out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. 10:43 to go in the first half. Skip Holtz trying to coach his quarterback up. Keep them in one piece. You think and you cry. That's a full day. That's a heck of a day. Help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations to fund cancer research. Operating expenses are paid for by an endowment fund. Log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1 800 4 Jimmy V to donate. You know, the Block Cancer Survivors Park is designed to provide information, education, hope, and enjoyment. There are three fundamental elements of the plaza. The sculpture depicting cancer treatment a success and success, a positive mental attitude block, and a road to recovery. There are seven plaques explaining what cancer is and basic actions to successfully overcome the disease. And uh, right across the street here, yeah. my friend, you can find that park. Well, we got a lot of love for all the... Wonderful people that have made the Jimmy V Foundation what it is today. We started by one of our colleagues here at ESPN, a guy I worked with for a few years, Jimmy Valvan. Ray Graham with the carry out to the 24 yard line. And this is danger zone now if you're South Florida defensively. You watch your offense cough it up on three different occasions. You get to see them just unfortunately time and again this season not be productive. And this is the group that's got to do it. These are your seniors. These are your juniors. This is the group that returns so much of their personnel, not been beaten by the injury bug like their offense, and they need to rise up and step up here on a critical early drive. Terry rolling out. Finds Shanahan. And Shanahan's going to get a very fortuitous spot. Out of bounds for the first down. Picks up eight. You know, everybody's been touched at one point or another by that insidious disease we call cancer and there's a look at Ryan Giddens his mom has battled cancer and he continues to be inspired by her toughness Wonderful spirit fighting that disease first down and ten Graham back in the ball game gained about four on the play and if you're wondering why Giddens is not on that field, he went earlier into the locker room with x-rays. He's one of the difference makers. Chris Kosh came in here year one from Kansas State, defensive coordinator. Worked with Bill Snyder for many years, had relationship with Skip Holtz going back to South Carolina. And he's, he's had a difficult time with this group. Wildly inconsistent, had a number of opportunities to make the critical play. We talked earlier, just nine takeaways on the season. On second and six. Graham bouncing it outside. Be a flag down. 
Graham down right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a holding on the edge there. You speak about Graham and his proficiency running the ball. He just moved into second. Holding. Offense. Number six. Ten yard penalty. Second down. Graham moved into second all time at Pitt in the rushing yards category in a career. Trailing only Tony Dorsett, but here's the hold. And that's your leading tackler, Kayvon <laughs> Webster, the corner, and a couple holds there <laughs> by Pitt, reaching and grabbing. Carswell grabbing by the arm. 906 to play in the first half. Pittsburgh leading 10 0. Panthers one win away from bowl eligibility. Terry completes it. Shanahan broke the tackle nicely. Stays on his feet. And some nice moves after the catch. In the market just a yard short of the first down. There was a missed tackle by Durden on the play and a pickup of 15. Shanahan's a unique athlete. He projects as an H-back tight end at the next level. But he's been really productive in his career. Big body kid, and that's what he does best. Those bubble screens, those quick hitches when he has space. A Joe Juravicious type. You know, big, big body guy that... In a passing league like the NFL, we'll have a look. He'll have an opportunity at the next level. He has six catches already for 58 yards. He's got a great name, too. <laughs> Third and one. Sinceri steps up and is brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 37. Sam Barrington making the sack on the play. A good quick burst. You asked a really good question earlier about those numbers, and you've done this long enough to know the numbers don't always tell the story. Over 250 passes without an interception for Tino, and that's part of it. If, if it is tight, if it is close, well, he's going to tuck it, and you'd like to just see him throw it in the first row, you know, avoid those five, six yards and losses and sacks. But he does everything to protect the ball. Fourth and six. Yaklik with the punt. They got a chance to down this. They're going to spot it at the two yard line. Great job on kick coverage on the punt by Yachlik. Victor Mark got downfield on the 62 yard punt. Hey, Pitt playing like they're trying to go to a bowl game.
joined you next in our college football studios. It is official. Here's how the SEC championship ended. Aaron Murray to Chris Conley. The dogs oh so close. The time runs out at the Georgia Five, and Alabama will play Notre Dame for a national championship. Mark? Pretty tight contest there, Dad. Folks, the tension continues to build Sunday night. We unveil the matchups to all the BCS polls. Rose Bowl game, Discover Orange Bowl, All State Sugar Bowl, Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, the Discover BCS National Championship game as well. Discover card, BCS selection, so Sunday at 8 30 on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. First and 10, 98 yards away. It's been a struggle tonight. The redshirt freshman quarterback, Matt Floyd, and now especially after that career young 62 yard punt. No gain on the play from Demetrius Murray stopped by Donald. You've said his name a number of times and it's, it's always fun to watch tape of these teams and to see the different unique athletes and he's one of them in college football. I swear to you you watch tape and you think he's 6'4", 285 <laughs> and you look at that sheet he's six foot 270. I said earlier a bit of a tweener in the NFL but just so productive at this level. Pass complete. A great open field tackle that time on the corner by Williams. Welch with his first reception of the game. He picks up two. Seeing in this game a couple corners as well. Number six on the other side, South Florida, Webster. And Williams there. K1, he is a boundary corner. Not a guy that's ideal out there covering the field, but they always keep him to the short side of the field so he can do just that tackle in space. Right out of the end zone and incomplete. And it's a quick three and out for the Bulls offense intended for Montgomery Pitts there on the coverage and Pittsburgh after this punt gonna have good field position once again. They only use up 59 seconds on the clock on that possession. Ronald Jones will be standing on the Bulls side of midfield at the 44. Keep an eye on Taglianetti 41 six career blocks he came after it a little bit. Brockhouse Khan gets off a skying tower and punt back to the 48 yard line where it'll be first down and 10 for Pittsburgh with 636 to go here for first year head coach Paul Chris. Let's take a look at this week's BCS standings brought to you by Discover Card. So, the dance card set Notre Dame against Alabama, partner. 
The de facto semifinal today down to the wire and gives some real credit to Nick Saban. You know, the, you know what the book says in the third quarter? You don't go for two. You don't go for two. Well, he goes for two, and because he has that four-point advantage in the fourth quarter, Aaron Murray has to try to find a way to score a touchdown. Doesn't, throws it short of the end zone. Bulldogs come up about five yards short. National championship game going to be played in Miami. That is a tough ticket already, my friend. <laughs> Shell in the ball game, and that's the flag down behind him at the 49-yard line. And Pittsburgh better be careful because they're letting the Bulls of South Florida hang around in a game they have no business doing so Hold right it. now. Offense, number 74. 10-yard penalty, first down. Hey, the table set for the national championship game. This is how they measure up statistically. I want to ask you, Brock, two times this year, tonight being one of them, that defense for Alabama has looked a little bit vulnerable. The other time in that loss at home against Johnny Football in Texas A&M. Well, even the LSU game, I think you can add that as well, where Zach Medenberger had a career day against that secondary. That's not the same unit they had a year ago. That bar was set really high. One of the best, I heard Reese Davis say that earlier today, one of the best defenses we've seen in a long time a season ago for Alabama. They are vulnerable. Notre Dame's gotten better and better each week. That sets up to be a real good one in South Florida. First down and 10. Shell on the carry. Going to be brought down at the 46-yard line. Gain of five on the play. Let me ask you, back to that game, who do you like? I'll tell you the one thing, and I'll tell you, the matchup today that I did not like for Georgia was that offensive line. They overcame some of that. Mm -hmm. What I don't like right now, if you're a Notre Dame fan, Nick Saban, he knows how to handle a 40-day layoff. Wow. He knows yeah. the calendar. He knows the preparation. He knows how to build to that moment. This is the first time Brian Kelly and, more importantly, any of those kids have ever had to do that. I heard a great story about Nick Saban and how nice it is for him to go in a living room and say to a kid, hey, you come play for me over the last decade, you get a ring. LSU and Alabama, no senior, nobody's been through for four years, has not walked out of my program without a ring. They know how to handle their business in that situation well. Second down and 15. This is Shell, pardon me, Bennett, his turn. Gets across midfield down to the 49-yard line. Picked up five on the play. Well, you're seeing a good mix of carries here. You've seen Shell, Graham, and Bennett. But like I said earlier, this game should not be right here, right? You turn it over three times. you got a registered freshman quarterback on the ropes. How many times have you had positive field position? And when you go on the road and you play a 3-8 and eight opponent, the worst thing you can do, Mark, is allow them to go into the locker room with a sense of hope and a sense of confidence, which right now a 10-0 game. Bulls feel like they can still overcome that. And one score, they're back in this. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. Sinceri taking a shot up top. And his receiver cut to the post street. And it was a flag pattern. Guys weren't on the same page, same script. There's a fourth down coming up now. That's all set up on the first down holding call. You have positive field position, and we've seen how many holding calls. We've seen the sacks. We have just seen Pitt, unfortunately, not take advantage of many of these opportunities. And you know what you are? You're one punt return. You're one kick return. You're one go round away for allowing South Florida to get right back into this thing. Victor Martin watches the bounce out of bounds. And that's going to be spotted at the two-yard line again. Get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN at 10 a.m. It's Sunday NFL Countdown. Chris Berman and the crew. And before you set your lineups, catch Fantasy Football Now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2 as our experts provide the latest news, reports, and performers. And I'll tell you for the 14th week, Jones, I don't do fantasy football <laughs> before you ask. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that Monday night matchup with uh, G3 and Eli Manning. But one more look at that punt. Took a sharp left. Wow. And for the second consecutive time, this one 47 yards. I'll tell you what, Yaklik has done a nice game, nice job tonight. Now this is the guy they don't mind, and that's a matchup. We've already seen him try a go route earlier. Do you take the top off? Double move. A little out and up. And into Bridge, they throw it out of bounds. Intended for Andre Davis, or at least he was the closest bull player. 
You like the concept and I understand it, but this pit team and we've seen it in this entire first half. Right now they're feasting, they're disguising, they're showing different looks, they're reading this quarterback's eyes, and they're not buying anything that South Florida is trying to sell. That's up a second down and ten. Marcus Shaw in the backfield. Off the play fake. Pass completes McFarlane, his first reception. He's the other guy that they were hoping to use Brock to work on those inside linebackers. Gain of a couple of yards on the play sets up third down and nine. But these are the situations you just can't afford to have. Field position, third and extra long passing situations. How many conversations can Skip Holtz have with his young yeah. quarterback in this first half? An inept offense so far producing just 55 yards. It's not like Pitt has been tearing it up either. As you mentioned, they've only gained 100. And watch in the middle of the line. This is the difference maker. Aaron Donald going to go to work here. Floyd out of the end zone has time. Incomplete intended for Victor Mark. Broken up nicely by Lafayette Pitts. And fourth down coming up with just enough time for Pittsburgh to think about another score here. They'll get good field position. And that was just a three man rush and you see some of the strength and the leverage of Donald getting right in the face of the quarterback. Nowhere to go. Justin Brockhaus Khan punting out of his end zone. Fair catch called at the 42. Ronald Jones makes the catch and they've been using the art of deception against that retro quarterback Matt Floyd. Haven't this, they? this defense gotten better and better this season and watch them. Take advantage and read the eyes. First of all, everybody accounted for. Todd Thomas, weak side linebacker, feasting on the inexperience. Your eyes are going to take me to the ball. I'm going to trust that. And Paul Chris right now, Dave Huxtable, defensive coordinator. There is no answer South Florida is finding. They're mixing coverage. They're disguising. They're giving different looks. Most importantly, though, Mark, they're covering up all of those options and not giving the youngster any easy completions. Ray Graham in the backfield gets the handoff. Graham inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. It's got to be a clear message if you're Tino Sinceri. 38th consecutive start. Get in that huddle and remind your team no negative plays. And remind yourself if we would just continue to push this pile and it's four yards and it's five yards and it's completions, avoid the holds, avoid the mistakes. And most importantly for yourself, get the ball out of your hands. Son of a former linebacker, his mom a former gymnast, so he's used to being able to handle harsh criticism has honed his own leadership skills and the flag Ball down. Start. Offense number 54 five yard penalty second down. That's against Chris Jacobson but back to Sinceri his dad Sal the former defensive coordinator at Tennessee his mom a former gymnast and uh, his brother Vinny is going to be playing for the national championship. He's a, a defensive back with Alabama. And Sal was an All-American here at Pitt. And this kid is tough and has tremendous instincts as you would imagine as the son of a coach but he like I said has got to remind his guys as that field general to avoid what they just did a silly five yard penalty on second and ten the slant complete and a first down at the 28 yard line to Mike Shanahan With two and a half minutes to go in the first half a 14 yard game big body 6'5, 225 and just get inside that's all it takes You've got a young redshirt freshman corner like Durden giving you that kind of cushion. Shanahan knows as a fifth year senior himself. If I just gain leverage and with my frame give Tino an opportunity to hit the eight and the seven we move the chains. On first and ten Graham bouncing it outside the turbo kicks in and Graham with another first down. They're going to spot it at the nine yard line. Let's go back to Wendy. Mark, thank you. Coming up with the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report, it's official. The SEC has crowned its champion. Alabama beats Georgia and moves on to face Notre Dame in the BCS National Championship game. I'm joined by Robert Smith and Todd McShay, and we look ahead to January 7th in Miami. Mark? Brock, if you're looking for tickets, I, I got a guy down in <laughs> South Florida. I got that 305 area sure. code, you know. Please reset, Please reset the game, guys. Please reset the game the box to 159. It is so, it is so remarkable. We, I sat there at ESPNU Studios 
about a month ago when all the teams were 8 0 and oh, how is this going to sort itself out and how's it going to work and it's undefeated? Who can you make the case for? Well, as Bill Hancock constantly reminds everybody, <laughs> the head of the BCS, it typically sorts itself out, and I think in this case it has. Sure did this year. First and goal. Graham keeps those legs driving inside the five yard line. Talked about his miraculous comeback. October 26, blew his knee out last year against UConn, tore his ACL, and he said that he got a little inspiration in his comeback from his uh, brother, Kasim Green, who's a good friend of Eric Legrand, the former Rutgers player, who's a paraplegic, but has been a real monument and inspiring figure. Well, he's quick, and when he sets his feet, he makes that initial cut, and if they get any surge up front, Touchdown run already tonight. I'd be surprised this ball goes anywhere else. Second and goal. Gets the call again. Graham. Stopped up. Found a lot of resistance in the middle. Webster led the way for the Bulls, making the tackle. This is where you take up that entire clock. You've got all three timeouts. South Florida with their offense is not looking to call timeouts anytime soon. And now that's back to back runs. Now that should set up as you see Shanahan coming into the game. That should, should be able to set up some of the play action pass. We like to get those tight ends involved. Third and goal. Shanahan comes to the bottom of your screen. They're going to pass it a blitz. Sinceri set back at the 12-yard line by Sam Barrington. They dialed up some heat, Brock, and got to him. I'm a little surprised by that call because stunts and blitzes have been problematic for this pit crew all season long, and that's just simply too easy. You've got to squeeze down and leave the edge guy. The most dangerous guy is always outside of you. Your offensive tackle he reaches out, leaves that gap wide open, and Barrington knows how to finish. Harper. This field goal from 27 yards out, it's up and good. When you say squeeze down, that's a football parlance. What does that mean? Is that <laughs> just block the inside guy? Always block inside out. Okay. Always protect from the inside. But the good news, since Harry protected the ball and got the three points. Celebrating its eighth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate contributes to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship monies. South. Pittsburgh with the field goal makes it 13 to nothing. South Florida's trying. That defense on a night where we're keeping a keen eye to see the effort, the energy, the want to out of that group. For as many times as that defense has been backed up against the wall this evening, they've continued to fight and respond. Now the script kick comes down to the 33-yard line, and that's going to be the end of the first half of play. We said this was a little bit of a referendum on Skip Holtz. This team has given him the requisite effort. 13-0 at the break. We're going to send it back to Wendy for the Outback Halftime Report. Wendy? Mark, thank you very much. I'm joined, as always, on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report by my partners, Robert Smith, Todd McShay. I'm Wendy Nix. We start with the SEC Championship game, Georgia-Alabama, but they were playing more than the SEC. Also at stake, a chance to play for a national title. Here come the Bulldogs trying to upset the Crimson Tide. Eddie Lacy, the handoff, gets the block, finds the gap, and goes in for the TD. Really, Eddie Lacy, a deceptively fast guy. Great blocking up front, though. He gets into the secondary, outruns everybody. A couple people had a chance to tackle him, but he's very good at getting through those arm tackles. Game tied at seven. Aaron Murray was the key to the game for Utah. Yeah, and, and he played well early on, but on that throw, he needs to lead his receiver down to the sideline, get the ball away from the free safety, and you see there, he paid the price. 
after. You could have called that maybe unnecessary roughness, but there was no call. Keep your head on a swivel. It's not unnecessary. <laughs> Alabama would settle for a field goal. Todd Gurley gets the ball, fights his way into the end zone. 14-10 Bulldogs. What a year for Todd Gurley. He has been fantastic. Everybody was talking about Gershaw, but he was the one big day against Florida, big day again today. Alabama with the 49-yard field goal attempt, and it is blocked by Alec Ogletree. Ogletree looks like a wide receiver. 6'3", 235 linebacker, picks it up, returns it for six. And there was the phantom tip the play before that. Should have been an interference yes. call. Third quarter, there's T.J. Yeldon. Alabama would convert on the two-point conversion. I guess we shouldn't be surprised anymore, but you talk about freshman after freshman after freshman making big plays in this Eddie game. Eddie Lacy. Lacy there. Dived and he became a human rocket getting in the end zone. <laughs> Lacey, 182 yards, two TDs. Here's Gurley up the middle, and that's good for the score. Georgia up 28-25. That's where we stand in the fourth quarter. Here's A.J. McCarron, play action, deep downfield. And Amari Cooper is there. And I'll tell you, the offensive line did a fantastic job on this play. Amari Cooper thought the play was dead, decelerated, but then accelerated, got into the open. A.J. McCarron, easy throw. Murray over the middle, ball tipped and intercepted by D. Milner. And that's this what they, play reviewed. Yeah, that's what they thought initially. Milner, their best cornerback, came up with a huge play. It looked like hands underneath, but when they reviewed it, you could see the ball did touch the ground. Georgia has an opportunity, 12 seconds to play in this ball game. Murray's pass, tip, caught, caught by Chris Conley, but he cannot get out of bounds as time expires and Alabama wins. Here's Tom Rinaldi with head coach Nick Saban. The difference for me right now is I can't get my heart settled down. I'd like to be happy and smile and celebrate, uh, but really what was the difference is running the ball in the second half. You know, we couldn't handle their pass rush, so we struggled to throw it. Uh, and you know, offensive line did a great job. Runners did a great job, and you know, we made a big play when we needed to. And you know, defensively, we didn't play as well as we need to. But uh, Georgia's got a great team. I'm really happy for everybody that's an Alabama fan, supporter. This is great for our university. It's great for our team. I'm really proud of our players. It took all 60 minutes, but Alabama able to outlast Georgia in the thriller. And all there were six lead changes in the game, including four in the second half. Alabama leaned on its ground game, rushing an SEC championship game record 350 yards in the win. And runners Eddie Lacy and T.J. Yeldon also become the first set of teammates to each rush for 100-plus yards in an SEC title game. But Georgia fans are cringing, Todd, at the way this one ended. It's tough because it, there were so many plays that led up to this ending, but I think that Georgia could have handled the last few plays differently. When you look at it, they get down the field after a big gain in the passing game, and they have 15 seconds left at the end of this throw. All chaos kind of breaks out. You see here, he gets inside the 10-yard line. You need to get up to the line because they're going to start the clock again. And Aaron Murray, in my opinion, should clock the ball. He should spike the ball here before it got down there. Should have been at 14 when he spiked the ball. They would never have thrown that pass. And I think the big key is if you spike it, then you have two plays Plus, you have the opportunity to regroup. And I don't think you're going to run a play-action pass and throw the ball to your running back here, which he may or may not have been trying to do. I think you come up with a different play call and maybe a different outcome, and you get two plays. That's the whole key. I understand what they were trying to do. They may have been trying to go the back corner of the end zone, and that's fine. But clock the ball. Take a minute to regroup. Get the right personnel in, and then go after it with two plays, knowing you have two plays versus hoping you have two if something goes wrong, which something did go wrong, you could, went wrong, and they lose the game. And you could see him motioning on the sideline there, looking like, well, should I clock it, should I clock it? Right. He must have gotten the signal back. Go ahead and Absolutely. run the play that we wanted. But to Nick Saban's point about the way that this Alabama offense wasn't able to protect against Georgia's pass rush, there are a couple of plays that are a great example of this. And you can see on this early play here, it's Jarvis Jones on the outside. It's a six-man scheme. The running back, Eddie Lacy, is supposed to help out D.J. Fluker. Stays way too far away from him, four and a half yards distance. He has no other responsibilities. He's got to get over there. He does not. Jarvis Jones is able to make the play and the strip. He's an absolute beast. But later in the game, you heard Nick Saban say it. They go with play action. Here, Fluker has Jarvis Jones on the outside. Everybody else doing their job, including in the middle, Barrett Jones against Kwame Gathers, all kinds of time for A.J. McCarron to complete the pass. This offensive line is the best in college football, not just running for 350 yards, but protecting at key points in this game. Just fantastic when you look across it.
And, that the guys you see. And the passing game wasn't working in the first half. Nick Saban goes in, in the halftime and says, you know what, we're going to run the football. We're going back to old school Alabama. 29 rushes compared to five passes, and 30 out of 34 plays, they were in two tight ends. So not only did they run the ball, they lined up and said, hey, Georgia, we're running the ball right at you, and they did it with great success. It's likely Nick Saban said a lot of things at the half. He was frustrated <laughs> after the first two quarters. A quick look at the projected national championship game. Uh, it, it should be about defense. Both teams rank among the six best defenses in the nation in points per game, rush yards per game, total defense, and opponent touchdown percentage. So let the hype begin. We've only got about 42 days or so, so <laughs> it's good to get started now. All right, this has been a run football team for Notre Dame. They have focused on the run, take the ball out of their young quarterback's hands, and win with defense. But now you have a, over a month to prepare. And you've got a coach in Brian Kelly who is, comes from a spread you out and throw the ball around the yard background, if you will. I'm interested to see with Everett Golson at quarterback, Tyler Eifert at tight end, T.J. Jones and some of the wide receivers that have stepped up, if Notre Dame's going to come out and have a completely different look than what we've seen this year because the weakness of this Alabama team clearly is the pass defense and specifically the secondary. And I'm interested to see how that Notre Dame offensive line would be able to hold up against Alabama and what they can bring. And it's not necessarily just the front four that you're talking about with Alabama. They bring pressure from a lot of different places. That's what defensive coordinator Kirby Smart specializes in. But I also look at the matchup on the other side. You talk about the offensive line of Alabama against the defense, and particularly that front seven of Notre Dame. And the one thing that Notre Dame doesn't have that you normally see out of these SEC teams, especially when you look at a Georgia, you look at an LSU, you see a lot of these fast edge rushers. Notre Dame doesn't have that. Stephon Tuitt, Lewis Nix, Prince Shembo, uh, you know, those guys that are in that front seven that get after the quarterback a lot, they're not really those speed kind of guys. And we know Alabama's got some horses up front. I think that they're going to be able to run the ball. They're the most balanced offense Notre Dame's faced all year. Monday, January 7th, we'll bring it to you from Miami. Kickoff around 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Details continue to emerge from an apparent murder-suicide in Kansas City. We'll have the details, including Sunday's plans for the game.
Halftime Report is presented by Outback Steakhouse. It's always fresh in the Outback. Coming up on Sunday NFL Countdown, in Dominic and Sue. Eastern on ESPN. Monday Night Countdown gets you set for kickoff at 6.30 Eastern, served by Applebee's. News continues to filter out of Kansas City after an apparent murder-suicide this morning. Police confirm that Chiefs linebacker Javon This is the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. Colin Klein and Kansas State facing Texas this game on ABC. No score here in the first quarter. Case McCoy in at QB for the Longhorns. Throws the pick. It's returned for a touchdown, or is it? Well, Nigel Malone does a great job stepping in front of that. But you can see it was reviewed. And oh, they say no. the ball never crossed no, the goal no line. Touchdown. I think they recovered it and scored on the next play. That is correct. Florida State and Georgia Tech in the ACC championship game. E.J. Manuel runs right, pitches to Defonta Freeman, who takes it in for the score. Florida State trying to bounce back after that. Lost to Florida, up 7-0 at the end of the first. That game on ESPN. The Pitt Panthers bowl eligible with a win. They lead over South Florida 13-0 at the half.
This halftime report is presented by Outback Steakhouse. It's always fresh in the Outback. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. That's a heck of a day. To donate, you can donate online or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Nebraska and Wisconsin for the Big Ten Championship. It's the Badger. Jason Hendricks with the pick for the Panthers. They are one half away from a win, leading South Florida 13-0. Second half coming soon. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jimmy Valvano's dream to defeat cancer and knock it out. Start of the third quarter, Pittsburgh leading 13 to nothing. A win tonight, and Pitt becomes bowl eligible with their sixth win of the season and looking for to hand uh, USF their third consecutive loss. Mark Jones along with Brock Heward. Quinn Kesnick down on the sidelines joining us in just a few moments. We said at the top of the show a win and bowl eligibility would be huge for Paul Chris the first year head coach coming from Wisconsin. What have they done to make this lean in their favor right now. Their defense played excellent ball 27 plays for South Florida just 55 yards and more than anything what I appreciate is what they're doing defensively in their past schemes to confuse the redshirt freshman quarterback. Never give him the same look pre snap in post snap. Look at Pitt. They rush three. They cover everybody underneath. They run out to the deep zones. There's no place for the young quarterback to go with the ball. Sticky in their coverage underneath and complex on the back end. And then even when they rotate to a simple three deep coverage, Matt Floyd has got to see that corner. That's not a hard read, but when you complicate them early, you can run the simple stuff and still confuse a redshirt freshman quarterback. Matt Floyd making just his second start of the season. With that Bobby Eveld in there in the wake of B.J. Daniel, who broke his foot back against UConn earlier in November. And Pittsburgh leading 13 nothing will kick off here to start the third period. Panthers are 30 minutes away from bowl eligibility. And Shaw watches it go out the back of the end zone. Let's go downstairs to Quinn. Spoke to Skip Holtz, South Florida, coming out of the tunnel. I asked him what we're going to see offensively in the second half. He said, well, at this point, we've proven we can't run the ball. He says, 
rushing the ball in that first half was like a wasted down. He said, we're going to open it up, go to the quick game. He said they were hesitant because of the three turnovers in the first quarter to give the game to, to Matt Floyd. And they were hesitant in the second quarter because of field position. But uh, clearly, the run game has not been there for South Florida. Yeah, just 55 total yards, Quint, and two foul. yards Unnecessary rushing. Very roughness, receiving team number 80. Blow to the head of the kicking team player. Half the distance to the goal, first down. And Mike McFarland called for a personal foul penalty for USF and that's going to drive them back even further and they're going to be in the predicament that Quint just said they were in the second quarter where every time it was backed up looking at your own end line the first quarter was mistakes it was interception the interception fumble that second quarter was no field position at all and now looking at 90 yards away once again I don't care if you can't run the ball you still have to show that you can't allow as I just showed in video this pit defense to dictate coverage pressure looks you got to find a way to make it a little easier on Matt Floyd. Maybe that's quarterback run as well. Look at his numbers tonight. First down and 10. Keeps it on the fake fly sweep and didn't get much yardage. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Might have lost two on the play. Aaron Donald again and indomitable force up front for Pitt. Good hands. When you're looking at those defense alignment and Hale's had one of his better outings this season as well but between he and Donald you want to find excellent defense alignment I don't think you can play that position unless you are good with your hands you win there first you let your explosiveness follow second and 12 that's going to be ruled a catch at the 15 yard line by Andre Davis now four back sets up a third down and eight and Farland and Price were supposed to be the guys that would be key Andre Davis another dangerous receiver for South Florida they haven't been able to go over the top on Pitt either tonight tough to do that when you can't protect Floyd has time and they take a shot up top incomplete and a flag on the play <laughs> intended for Davis and Williams looks like he's going to be flagged here on the pass interference, pass interference. defense number two 15 yard penalty automatic first down. Dewan Williams is a physical corner. He likes to press and play into that boundary. That's fine. That's fine. That's some hand checking. He actually turns around. Usually the sideline referee is going to give you the benefit of the doubt if you turn, especially on a grossly underthrown mm. pass like that. That's a tough call. It coming with pressure off the edge, and boy, Floyd was forced into getting rid of that inaccurately. And off target. But Hale was coming with some heat. Second down and 10 coming up. I don't care what level it is. And, and in fact, this stadium knows really good D line play. When they won the Super Bowl here with John Gruden, it was the front four. And that's what Dave Huxtable counts on. And it's critical to everything they do and all of that coverage, trusting those four impact the pocket like they have. On second and 10. This time given time and incomplete over the middle, broken up nicely by Jason Hendricks in and out of the arms of Andre Davis. Let's get back to the whole protection issue after this replay. This is a play you got to make and this is the big fella getting in there. We saw the earlier interception off of his hands. He's got to find a way to help your quarterback out as much as he's going to struggle anyway with inexperience. You got to finish even if that pass isn't perfect. Third down and ten. Brought down and sacked back at the 20 yard line. Who else? Aaron Donald having a night. And I talked about this, Brock, just a second ago. I was going to ask you how much of the protection scheme are they putting on the quarterback, Matt Floyd, and how much is being called from the sidelines? You have six protectors right there. That running back is checking his way out. You have six against three, and that happens. Mm. Does that answer your question? That's a good, good answer. Ronald Jones. They return it from the 30. Looking for an alley. Might have found one. Jones still on his feet. And brought down at the 31 yard line. Pitt with a nice punt return. And they're going to be in business here with good starting field position. A 39 yard punt return and a player down at the 30. More often than not, when you look at successful punt returns, it's north to south. And that's exactly. Yeah, Jones did just that. What the true sophomore does. There's no wasting of energy. 
quickest way to get from point A to B. Yeah, he sets it up initially with a little lateral movement, but then it's downhill. That's Fidel Montgomery, the injured player for South Florida. That's a clean block. You know how they judge that, right? Those referees, how they often judge that is the way that body falls. Mm -hmm. When that body falls, is that perpendicular to that contact there? You're not going to get that block in the back. He falls forward. More often than not, you draw that penalty. You're saying that was clean? Clean. Head on a swivel. First down and 10. Zones in motion. Graham on the carry tries to cut it back and knocked down at the 31 yard line, 30 yard line by Eric Lee. Gained the yard on the play. Second down and nine coming up. Yes, and Surrey, that streak's still alive. Hasn't thrown an interception in eight and a half games now. Fifth year senior started 37 games in his career. Has 259 yards passing. Pardon me. Completions without a pick. Graham. At about the 28 yard line. What do you make of Ray Graham and uh, his performance tonight and in the big picture what he was a year ago before the knee injury? Well, he's not gotten the lanes that he got against a really good Notre Dame defense. I mean, this South Florida crew and their front seven is still competing and playing hard. And as I said earlier, he doesn't, I think, have all of his top end speed back. Hard to do after just 13 months. But you see the big brace off. His quickness seems to be getting close. And I bet by bowl season, he's going to be even that much healthier, more explosive. They're down in six, and they're going to whistle this one dead. Now back to uh, Rick Graham. He's only 3,300 yards behind Tony Dorsett. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> Chopping into it. <laughs> Offside defense. Number 97 unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty, third down. It's against Ryan Giddens. Good to see back in the game. Giddens had the x-ray earlier. Pitt talked a lot about using that snap count, especially in these third and passing situations. Since uh, since Harry has been sacked three times, he's been hit multiple other times in this passing situation. You try to use that to slow down that pass rush. You also try to double cadence to get an idea of what they're going to do in their blitz and allow your offensive linemen to see that. This is a much better down and distance for the way Pitt is built. On third and one, Graham has the first down. Makes it to the 20 yard line. We talked a little bit of Pitt just a second ago. What about South Florida? They're down here in this game, Brock, but it seems to be it's not for a lack of effort, which speaks well to the coaching staff, correct? It is, and you would expect that from Porkchop Grissom in there, 46. He's an NFL guy. A lot of experience in that front seven, and they are playing plenty hard. You're not seeing a lack of effort on that defensive side of the ball yet at the same time mark this is a proud program mm. this is a program even though they're four and 15 over their last 19 they have still won since they've been in the FBS 60 percent of the games and that's why there's frustration in town with back to back losing seasons first down and 10 here's Graham again nice move inside the 15 to the 14 yard line brought down by Mark Joyce remember it wasn't that long ago when Jim Grove was here as head coach this was the number ranked two team in the country well, they went really high in the rankings that one year under Jim Grobe and uh, that really raised the bar of expectations That's exactly right Jim Levitt had them number two in America and you know who was number three back check in that Jim Levitt that's right I said Jim Levitt <laughs> my bad yeah second down and four fumble and Sinceri gets it back wait till you see who was number three in that poll to speak of where college football was in 2007 wow and where it is today Couple of the Blue Bloods, LSU still in there, Oklahoma, Ohio State. The Boston College with Matt Ryan, number three, and you're right, Jim Levin. I was talking to some folks here in town. It was This was a tough ticket back in 07. This place was rocky, not an on-campus facility, but when he had it going, this was still a difficult atmosphere to play in. Love watching him run in wind sprints on the field before the game. Third and six. This is Shanahan territory. Sinceri steps up and fires a strike. Inside the five complete 
to Devin Street. It's first and goal for the Panthers. A 13 yard gain. A little surprised to see base coverage. Not what South Florida does best. They've had so much, so much success tonight defensively. Blitzing and harassing Sinceri. That time they rushed just four. And isn't that a difference? Don't you just see some of the poise and the moxie of a fifth year senior counter tonight with a redshirt freshman on the other side that's gotten such little help around him? First and goal from the two yard line. Graham time. Down to the one yard line. Graham has just been over a thousand yards rushing this season on this drive. Skip Holtz, obviously the son of Lou Holtz, and you hear Lou all the time in college football when they do that halftime show. These, that first drive or two coming out of halftime is so critical. South Florida down just 13 coming out of the gate. Uh, once again, a three and out or the penalty in a, in a punt. And conversely, Pitt just grinding away exactly the plan Paul Chris wanted to establish. Graham. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. After that good punt return, Pittsburgh working with a short field and punches it in. And a pretty good statement to begin the third quarter. His second touchdown tonight. Good leg drive. I mean, that's... The one thing is you've talked about and asked me about a number of times. I don't think he has all of his dynamic ability back that he once had. That, that doesn't just typically happen just a year removed from the ACL, but he still knows how to play the game, have that patience and feel and leg drive to get it in. The extra point good with 8.48 to go in the third quarter. Pitt looking for their sixth win in bowl eligibility. Set up by this nice Ronald Jones punt return. Pittsburgh Jones in for one more bowl game. Back with more in a minute. I'm going crazy. Think about you, baby. Just a side or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Welcome back, everyone. College football prime time presented by Miller Lite. Pittsburgh increasing its lead to 20 to nothing with 8.48 to go in the third quarter courtesy of that Ray Graham touchdown run, his second touchdown of the night. The Panthers looking for their sixth win and bowl eligibility as a result, a lot of different scenarios thrown around as to 
where their destination potentially could be. Victor Mark back for this kick. They'll return it from the two. And now Sally up to the 32 yard line. South Florida trying to hang in. Lord taking the reins of the offense when we come back. Back in Tampa, Florida, Pitt leading South Florida 20 to nothing. During that last South Florida possession, running back Marcus Shaw on the sideline got into a confrontation with an assistant coach, threw his helmet, and basically ran into the locker room. Well, during Pittsburgh's possession, some of the veteran players, led by Sterling Griffin, went into the locker room. They pulled Shaw back on the sidelines. You look at him, he's visually distraught right now on the sideline. Not sure exactly what the confrontation was about, but uh, you see some of the distress on the Bulls sideline. Yeah, certainly a lot of frustration and understandingly so with all that this team has been through this year. Here's a reverse to Andre Davis looking to pass it downfield and incomplete at the 30 yard line. Davis threw it a long way but it'll come back second down and 10 intended for Jordan Duvall. Well it's disarray. It's exactly right. It's discouragement. It's frustration. You've done nothing offensively today. I mean, 27 plays for 55 yards in the first half. There is some pride to everybody, pride to the coaching staff and players. And this has just been a train wreck. On second and 10, this is Murray. And Murray takes it out to the 25. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. It's the Taco Bell studio update featuring the ACC championship on ESPN. Florida State, Georgia Tech. Seminoles with a 7 0 lead, but they'll add to it here thanks to James Wilder Jr. 14-3 Florida State in the second quarter. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. Back here is a penalty against Duvall on offense. Pushes the nose of the ball back to the 20-yard line for South Florida. I mean, this is gut check time. It, it really is, and Skip Holtz knows it. And he's a positive guy and was incredibly positive with us. And he's trying to deal with a third-string quarterback and all these injuries. But there is a boiling point. Third down and 20, and another flag thrown on the field. Full start. Offense. Number 17. Five-yard penalty. Third down. And the hemorrhaging continues for the Bulls. And that's true freshman wide receiver, redshirt freshman quarterback. True sophomores, true freshmen. I mean, it, unfortunately, no one wants to hear this, and in, in the hometown faithful don't want to hear it. 
But this is what comes oftentimes with youth and inexperience, but you can't have it in this kind of disarray. With six of the 25 seniors are actually playing right now because of injuries. And maybe a lack of leadership and an interception at midfield. And Pitt will have good field position on the pick by Williams. That's the third interception of the night thrown by the redshirt freshman Matt Floyd. I can promise you that conversation with Skip Holtz is, hey, listen, young kid, and that's Devario, a true freshman. If your redshirt freshman's going to put it up for you, it's your ball or nobody's ball. You just can't, that can't happen. I mean, you're just making that too easy on Kwan Williams, the junior. And Pittsburgh doesn't need any help. You've seen how sound they've been. I've showed you all the disguises and the different looks. But you see the head down. I mean, that's that's deflating. I, I'm trying to give you a chance. You got to help me when you can. It's your ball or nobody's. Fair for Floyd to expect a little bit more effort as Shell showing lots of effort and talent. First down run down to the 40 yard line. That's a look at the true freshman. Russell Shell, who averaged 205 yards rushing a game in high school. Injured player there. Giddens again off the field earlier He's with had the, some struggles tonight with injuries. Wrist x ray. That looks like a shoulder that's already beaten up and bandage. Now you got to watch these guys. Now you got to watch this defensive group. Watch the body language. Watch the effort. Watch the chipping and chirping at each other. First down and 10. We've already seen a little bit of frustration. I remember the offense. Nice bubble screen complete. This is Street. Street. Didn't get the pylon. And they're gonna say he stepped out of bounds at the three yard line. But there's a flag down on the play, and this one might come back. Mike Shanahan. Holding. Offense, number 87. Penalty enforced on the spot of the foul. First down. And Chris doesn't like it. He's not apologize. He knows when you have someone down, you want to finish. And outside. And into the screen is Shanahan. He has a little bit of a handful, but that <laughs> I don't know about that. Hmm. Well, that's, that's, yeah. that's that's 6'5, 225 on the little corner. And you can see Chris reaction. He didn't like that call one bit. I don't either. First and ten back at the 35. And so he hands it off to the freshman Shell, who's tripped up in the backfield. Back at the 38-yard line by Watson. Well, the good news for Pitt is that they haven't given up a bunch of deep balls thrown over their, pardon me, uh, South Florida, deep balls over their head as they have for most of the season in the secondary this year. Second and seven. Carswell in motion. Missouri underneath, in and out of the arms of Shanahan. And he took a hit, too. And Barrington delivering the blow. It'll be third down and seven coming up for Pitt. And, uh, you know, for all of the woes that South Florida has experienced tonight, Pitt hasn't been overly impressive either. Just 100 and 86 total yards of offense. That's why they're sitting there in Paul Chris, year one, five and six. Many opportunities this year to be more consistent. Now, I found South Florida right now. This has got to be Blitzville, USA. You can't let Sinceri set his feet. Third and seven. Got to get to the 30. Shanahan makes a great catch at the 12 yard line. Got in behind the linebacker. And Mike Shanahan comes up with a clutch catch on third down. Shanahan, a career night at halftime in this one with seven catches already. Good separation earlier, and that's just tremendous ball skills. That's not an easy catch, especially at 6'5", 230. That ball is supposed to be thrown out front a little bit more. He does a nice job of slowing down, retreating. And unlike the freshman on the other side, it doesn't help his buddy out. You see a fifth-year senior helping his fifth-year senior quarterback. Street down to the two yard line. Boy, what a catch once again by Shanahan. That uh, will have the hashtag SC top 10 attached to that one. I mean, it's just such a study of contrast tonight, isn't it? I mean, in many ways, you're looking at the difference between a redshirt senior class at the right positions in the right spots, a quarterback most importantly.
but a receiver too that just finding ways to help one another out and unfortunately for South Florida well, 180 the other way backs lining up out of the eye second and one shell the freshman weaving his way looks like he got enough for the first down he's going to get a good spot it looks like to make it first down and goal for Pittsburgh and now this is where that style of Paul Christ can really wear a defense down right well, just look at those big fellas it's going to be fun to watch Paul Christ build this program in the ACC it, it's going to be and he's not going to apologize and tell you any different he knows exactly who he is at 47 years of age and the first head job he took this job he had other opportunities through the years, but he felt like he could win here because he could recruit those kids in Western Pennsylvania. And he's going to grow them up here. I promise you that. First and goal. Shell in a tailback gets the call. Stutter stepped and was stopped up short of the line of scrimmage. Had a lost a yard on the play. Good penetration by D.B. Lattimore. D.B. Lattimore, weak side linebacker, moved him in the middle after the fourth game and paid off there. And Chris was saying, I'm really excited about his kids he has committed right now. And over the last two years, just one offensive line recruit. One offensive lineman signed. That it will go 180 the other way once again. He is going to sign kids. He's going to grow them. I asked him if he's going to go the junior college route at all, and he said absolutely not. We do exactly what we've done everywhere I've been, and that's develop my talent. Second and goal. Into the end zone, wide open. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Holtz with the catch. And we weren't seeing that in the first half, were we? A lot of contested plays. The bubble screens were contested. But even the play pass, they've done a nice job, as you referenced earlier, not giving up anything easy. Very different on that drive. J.P. Holtz with his third touchdown catch of the season. And Sinceri with his 19th touchdown pass of the year as well. Still without an interception in about eight and three-quarter games. It was set up by the interception on the corner by Williams. And once again, a key catch by Mike Shanahan. A sports center top ten, no doubt. Now you talk about room service. That's everything but the chocolate on your pillow at night. Hit leading 27 0 when we come back. Everyone, coverage of Monday Night Football continues on ESPN at 6.30. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. And at 8.30, NFC East Rivals Clash, Eli Manning, RG3. Giants versus Washington. Monday at 8.30 on ESPN. Well, 
They could use a little bit of Jason Pierre Paul right now. He's like you too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Him do backflips while no. he was here on campus. I heard, I heard the stories though. Go did did talk with his name? Yeah, go to YouTube. When he was a bowl there in their bowl preparations, he did. I mean, count like six flip four. After that's back pretty agile. Foot, six four. I think he's six six. <laughs> is that what it is? Seven. He's freaking nature. <laughs> it's worth eighteen forty six away from bowl eligibility. This one down to the three to Victor Mark. Mark with a nice return out to the 28-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. We go back to the Big Ten Championship. And on ESPN in the ACC Championship, Florida State leading Georgia Tech 21-3. And on ABC, a four-point game, Kansas State leading Texas 7-3. Mark? All right, Wendy. Nice run by White uh, Wisconsin. I see Wisconsin bounce back after that uh, last-second loss last week against Penn State. Demetrius Murray on the run with 3.34 to go in the third quarter. Picked up two on the play. Bunch of last-second losses, unfortunately, for Brett Bielema sitting there at 7-5, to five, but doesn't matter. You get that one, you get to the Rose Bowl, and have to apologize at all for just eight wins this season if they can finish that one out. Pass incomplete by Floyd. Broken up nicely by Todd Thomas. Have you seen one pass with separation tonight? It almost looks like Pitt has like three extra guys on the field do you in know, coverage. Do you know how much easier it is when you rush three and drop eight or you rush four and really affect that pocket? Third down and eight. You could call these defenses. Boyd incomplete in and out of the arms as it was receiver. Montgomery. Well, there were times this year when South Florida was actually leading late in the ball game, and they all turned up on the wrong side of the win-loss column. And it's a difference with a fifth-year senior that they have, and B.J. Daniels, a quarterback. And how about a senior running back in Lamar Lindsey that was really finding his way? I mean, that's how close they were to being bowl eligible, and a very different story here with inexperience and all this youth trying to find their way. Donald Jones watches it go to bounds at about the 22-yard line. Take a look at our FaceTime profile brought to you by Edward Jones. Hopefully we'll get to Tom see him. Tonight. Yeah, he's uh, been kind of quiet for obvious reasons. They uh, haven't had many scoring opportunities. But uh, native of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and was featured uh, by ESPN Brazil to promote American football down there. Brock, maybe you and I can get a gig down there and promote the sport a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Spend a few months, work for the company. <laughs> Family down there this offseason. There he is. He's had some big kicks for this team. <laughs> nice run here by Russell Shell. Out over the 40, pushed out of bounds at about the 42 yard. 17 yard game by one of the most prolific running backs in Pennsylvania high school football history. And really, when you want to build an ideal back, Think of Wisconsin through all those years. Monte Ball's a little different. He's got an extra gear. But think of Ron Dane. Think of the big power backs they had that love to run behind their pads, love to run behind 320-plus pound linemen. As I said earlier, I think it's going to be a good recipe in the ACC. Oh. Oh, run by Shell, pounding his way forward. About a yard short of the first down before Montgomery made the tackle on the play. Interesting to watch him once Ray Graham leaves as well. I think right now as a true freshman to come in, I'm playing as a true freshman. Obviously, could have gone anywhere in, across the nation as far as his prospects and instead stayed close to home, stayed close to his twin daughters, one years old. It'll be fun to watch him grow once that senior's gone and the role is completely his. One. How is he different? Start, start. Offense, number 74, five-yard penalty, second down. How is, he How is he different from Graham? He's a good 25 pounds, and, and I would expect he's, he's probably going to up that a little bit. I mean, you're looking at a true power back, still light on his feet. I, I try to always get down and warm ups and take a look at these guys and you know, we've seen true freshmen. You watch them in the SEC championship. You, we, we saw Georgia twice this year. I mean, that is a position that you can come in as a freshman and have an impact. 
and he has and he's going to have even more over his tenure in pit. Second down and six. Boy that's going to be two in a row. Number 78 five yard penalty second down. Not the kind of close that head coach Paul Christ is probably looking for from his pit Panthers. 31 to go in the third period penalties and turnovers you want to study Wisconsin you want to know how that recipe has worked a for Barry Alvarez B handed down to Brett Bielema and while he was the coordinator the last six years go study the records of penalties and turnovers and the number of times that that program in Madison has been at the top of the list with this style of play it's what you got to have well again to the 44 yard line I want to ask you about penalties and there are anomalies to that formula that I like to find, by the way, with my algorithms. Yes. Um, the University of Miami, back in their heydays, in the Big East, the old Big East conference. You want to know why? Traditionally one of the most penalized teams, yep. but the most successful as well. Two reasons. Explosive plays offensively and game-changing plays Ray Lewis defensively. Okay. You want to offset that, and this isn't a big play explosive offense. This is a grind it, wear it down. You, you add that element of the big explosive game changing plays, you can get away with more turnover. They're down in six. And a sack back at the 38 yard line. They got to him. And Sinceri couldn't find an open receiver. He was swallowed up back there by Zach Bullock. And he's swallowing a little pride <laughs> and a little <laughs> frustration as well. And why South Florida doesn't blitz in every passing situation the rest of the way here. I wouldn't know. You got to get after him. You've had success. That's their fourth sack already tonight. Fourth down and 11. In comes Yaklik. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter of play. Pittsburgh looking for their sixth win and 15 minutes away from bowl eligibility. Wendy next here in our college football studio. Some more difficult news to report. Rick Majerus, the former head basketball coach at St. Louis in Utah, has passed away. Majerus had been battling a serious heart condition, and he's dead at the age of 64. Mark? Wendy, 
uh, send all of our condolences out to Rick and his family. Had a chance to call several of his games as a coach and had great conversations and moments with him as a colleague at ESPN. He was really de dedicated to his profession. Fourth down and 11. Takes a Pittsburgh bounce all the way down to the sure 12 yard line. That's the way it's been tonight for Pittsburgh. We're going to tie him out on the 49 yard punt back after more. ESPN College Football is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at WatchESPN.com and with the Watch ESPN app. Great device to have on your uh, iPad, iPhone. Let's see the computer. Illinois State Redbirds ah. advance to the quarterfinals. Shout out to the brother. <laughs> Pat Floyd having a tough time tonight. Going to take off. He's got some wheels. And takes it out to the 22-yard line. It's on first down. That's nine more yards than they was for all game. Minus two before that snap. When you can't run the ball, you turn it over four times. 27-0 happens. They have less than 100 yards of total offense in this game. 66 as of now. First and ten. Out of the backfield. Battles. Bradley battles with a nice run out to the 44. And for the first time, we see a busted coverage actually from the Pitt Panthers defense. Have been so good all game, getting snug on the underneath receivers. We see some backups in the game. Colin Christian there, 24. First time he missed assignment on that side of the ball. 20 yard gain on the play by Bradley Battles. Interesting that we haven't seen Marcus Shaw, who left the field temporarily and seemingly coaxed back onto the field. And out of the locker room by his teammates. This complete to Andre Davis. And Davis picked up about eight. What is this? Let's be honest here. What does this mop up time and garbage time mean to Matt Floyd, a redshirt freshman? Well, you got to find some level of success. I mean, it can be obviously very difficult to get four scores in 13 minutes with the way this thing has gone. 
This is where you have got to feel good about your offseason and just finish this 13 minutes out the best you can. Looks off the corner and a great pass and catch at the 43 yard line. Good reception by Sean Price. And man, did Floyd take a hit on the play from Eric Williams? Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 71. Bringing the full weight of his body on the quarterback unnecessarily. Well, I, don't, I don't think that was 71. I think that was 49 with the kiss to the chin. That is 15. You can't go to the headgear. Coach Holtz told us very clearly yesterday, the biggest strength right now with Matt Floyd is that toughness, is that want to and commitment. And he's going to get looked at on the sidelines. And you're going to get to see now the fourth quarterback yep. used this season, the converted tight end H-back. Coral Springs, Florida. This should get interesting. In a year when they've had to improvise a little bit too much for their own good. Hand off to Murray. And Murray might have got any yard on the play. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes Matt Floyd to regain his sensibilities from the sidelines and get back in the game. Landy is a former quarterback. Came into the program as a quarterback and a hockey player. And he's going the double glove look as well. How do you throw with those gloves on, Brock? You're a quarterback. Or do you? Can you throw it with those gloves on? Oh, he is a lefty. <laughs> okay. A safe handoff to Demetrius Murray, and somebody lost a hat down on the field. And Murray holding his ribs. Boyd, meanwhile, after taking that hit from Williams, still on the sidelines. Boyd was making just his second start. All at the 21 yard line, and uh, the clock counting down a little bit too slowly for Pittsgood. Third down and four. Landy completes the pass. And a first down to McFarland. Hey, the lefty delivered. Oh, there's nothing prettier in football, is there, than a lefty <laughs> spinning it? <laughs> okay. A little spiral, too, and on the money. Brock, it was a seven-yard pass. Anyway. <laughs> That's the fourth quarterback. That's four-string converted tight end quarterback. First down and goal. I haven't said that all night. Seemingly for USF. And you're going to keep it and know where to go. You know, it's not often that you see a quarterback with the trunk open like that. No. He's got that back flap. And, you know, someone's got to close that trunk for him. That's the tough guy look. You know, you guys are a little bit more buttoned up in th than that usually. This kid's actually a pretty cool story. He came here very highly acclaimed, small college, small high school hockey player. Actually turned down a minor league hockey deal. 70 receptions in his career. It's a pretty good tight end H back. And just tonight doing whatever he can for the team and mop up duty here. Legs down, and he goes down at the 10 yard line. Offside defense number 97 in the neutral zone at the snap. Well, Landy at least will have an opportunity to tell his people on senior day this was the scene before it, before the game, that he got to handle the pill a little bit and play quarterback. His family members there enjoying the last time that he'll play a home game here. Hockey player. Hmm. Second goal. You know he's tough. Seven. Hands it off and nowhere to go that time for Murray. Nice tackle by Devin Cook and Floyd comes back into the game. Landy got one completion. And the sparse crowd here with a shower of booze. I'm not sure why. And if he has time, this is the matchup he likes. He likes his true freshman price if they can lock him up up front. On third and goal. Boyd looking to pass. And incomplete. Intended for Sean Price. You go for it here, right? Fourth down? Absolutely. 
Time. A look of uh, disbelief on the look of some of the fans' faces here. And on he's 17 of 22 on the season. This to avoid the shutout. And South Florida on the scoreboard. I hear fireworks. I hope that's what they are. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Grab your friends, bring your IDs. If you're 21 or over, it's Miller time. Beautiful night here in Central Florida. Sunday night, folks. We unveil the matchups to all the BCS Bowls. The Rose Bowl game, Discover Orange Bowl, All-State Sugar Bowl, Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, and the Discover BCS National Championship game. The Discover card BCS Selection Show, Sunday at 8.30. ESPN also live on Watch ESPN. People curious in that BCS to see what happens with Boise State. I think everybody thought there'd be no BCS buster, and then all of a sudden the Big East doesn't have anybody in the top 25. Right. And if Boise State can somehow climb to number 16, which would mean leapfrogging and idle Michigan and some others, they've got a shot. Jones fields it. And Jones. Ball came loose. Out of the 22 yard line. And Pitt recovered it. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. A look at Texas and Kansas State on ABC. Here's Case McCoy looking for his intended target, Jackson Shipley, 10 7 Longhorns as we close out the first half. Not a lot of suspense in the ACC or Big Ten. Florida State beating Georgia Tech 21-6 and Wisconsin 35-10 over Nebraska. Wisconsin look like they're going to they keep up this scoring. Uh, be the Big Ten Conference champs. This is Graham. Graham runs for the first down. What do you make of Wisconsin, there's going to be some asterisks attached to that because of Ohio State's situation, because of Penn State's situation yeah. this year. What, what do you make no, of that? There's going to be some unrest in Lincoln, unfortunately. 
and the expectations there and you're facing a seven and five team with a third quarterback in Madison and a fifth year senior that they have we saw Wisconsin up right. close and personal a week ago and some of the warts they have coming in there at seven and five and not just winning right now but handling Nebraska and setting up a rematch the old Tyrone Willingham Stanford Cardinal and Ron Dane Wisconsin Badgers from way back First down in ten and Flag sorry. Sorry. offense number 56 five yard penalty first down tell you what I'd like to see that Taylor Martinez touchdown run again it's phenomenal <laughs> We've got it done one of the highlights from Wendy back in the studio first down in 15 here Sal Sinceri has gone the distance for Pitt he's now played eight and three quarter games without throwing an interception and well on the way to leading his team to another bowl game Closing out a pretty good career. Anytime you pass Dan Marino on the list at Pitt, you're doing pretty well. Regardless of the category, completes the pass to J.P. Holtz. Let's take a look at the Discover card at BCS standings. So UCLA loses, Kent State loses. I told you Michigan is idle in Texas right now. You know who's rooting like mad for Kansas State? Tell me those folks in Boise hoping that Kansas State can beat Texas and all of a sudden if Boise State can leap from leapfrog and idle Michigan and get to 16 it's an automatic they get there it's not they are guaranteed if they can get to 16 without any Big East representative doing some cheering here's Ray Gray a nice move and out by midfield another first down picks up 14 on the play I was talking about uh, quarterbacks in Siri a little bit earlier. He had passed Dan Marino tonight to move into the number three spot at Pitt in total offense. Dan Marino uh, in a long line at the top of the list of great quarterbacks that have played at Pitt. Van Pelt, another one. John Congemi, one of my South Florida neighbors. Not in Fort Lauderdale. Great quarterback here at Pitt back in the day. There's Graham, and Graham stopped up. Got about a yard on the play. And you know what you appreciate about a Sinceri, what you appreciate about a Ray Graham is it's been a bumpy road. I mean, that's well, welcome to life, welcome, welcome to college football. I mean, all the coaches we talked about in the open, four different coaches that Tino's been through, a number of different systems, and Paul Chris didn't mince any words with me, mince any words pregame. He said, if we get to a bowl, I'm going to give these seniors the reward they deserve. They are going to have a great time. I'm going to work my young kids. There's going to be a lot of hitting with the kids that have been in the back of the meeting rooms. <laughs> but the kids up front and these seniors who have been through the ringer, and many of them through injuries and great adversity, they're going to enjoy their bowl experience. You want to talk about a, as Graham stopped up behind the line of scrimmage, lost about three, a potential matchup in the pinstripe bowl, perhaps at Yankee Stadium. And, uh, now, when you talk about the coach saying he's going to give the seniors a good time, is that no curfew? Is it light practices? What does that translate into well, from a player's sure. perspective? I, I think it's practice time most importantly. And you've got a Chris Jacobs in the left guard as a six-year senior with rebuilt knees three times. And a bunch of these seniors that have been through a, a lot of injuries, you're going to take it easy on them physically. Make sure they're still sharp to win that game. But a lot of the hard work and grunt work, get ready, freshman. <laughs> 30 12. Buckle it up. Sinceri delivering a strike to Shanahan, completed the 33. Those two really on the same vibe and frequency tonight. Another first down. 6.03 to go. And that's one of the seniors, two of the seniors right there. That connection on a career night for Mike Shanahan. Wouldn't it be great? I mean, as you drive the season out, and it's been ups and downs and wildly inconsistent, the box of chocolates is exactly what Paul Christ called it. Wouldn't it be cool for them? to see their rival to see West Virginia in Yankee Stadium to get that opportunity in a day and age Brock when rivalries are starting to disappear a little bit because of conference realignment up oh, that, that makes for a pretty attractive bowl game first down and 10 Peter Syracuse I think is going to be the decision made there tomorrow bubble screen pass is knocked down going to say it was live a lateral off the hands of quiet street recovered it for Pitt take a look here and see if indeed it was a lateral hmm. I don't, I, that's that's a tough call this ball is batted down out of his hand I Looks think like that's got to be yeah, I think that's got to be an incomplete 518 to go 
the officials discussing this one. Now. The ruling on the field is the forward pass was tipped by a defensive lineman. That is an incomplete pass. There you go. Second down. You got it right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I think there's a no doubter about that one. So the ball moves back to the 35-yard line. 5:18 to go. Second down and ten. Zeri, incomplete intended for his favorite target tonight, Mike Shanahan. Yeah, Shanahan has put in a good day's work. Big body kid. You want to just try to get inside leverage, but he's also shown you he can do it down the field. We'll catch him run, little yards after contact. I'm sure like that one right there. Going up with the left hand and the ball just thrown inside that he can adapt to his third 100 yard receiving game of his career. Career high nine receptions. This is the way you want to go out. This is exactly what Paul Christ had hoped for and his staff had hoped for with these veterans to finish strong. Defensively been dominant, offensively have done just enough. They intend to pass complete that street. And he takes it down to the 13 yard line. Looking at how Pitt offensively does things, have they provided any kind of a blueprint on how to compete with Notre Dame? Because they gave the Fighting Irish a real scare earlier this year. You know, I think the blueprint is very similar to what Alabama does at a higher level and a much more consistent level with an offensive line that this guy hopes to, to grow one day. And that's to have those those guys up front that can win in the run game. I went back and I watched that tape and I looked at Pitt and to see what they did against Notre Dame. It was an overwhelming snap after snap. But they got a body on a body. And sprung Ray Graham loose for 170 yards in that matchup. There he is trying to bounce outside. Down at the 13 yard line. And let's talk about the Fighting Irish in that national championship game coming up against Alabama. Now you're going to see two things. Number one, Lewis Nix. Number nine is not in this game. But more importantly, you're going to see that pit offensive line actually get to Manti Teo. And when you get a helmet on him, and I don't care how good a linebacker you are, you get a body on Manti Teo down the field and you spring open some lanes. And look at the size of those in Notre Dame. Those two runs accounting for 100 yards on the day. Ray Graham, but, but clearly an Alabama that looks at their offensive line, and you saw it today in the SEC championship. That's the best offensive line. It may not be defensively where they've been, but that offensive line and that offensive line play at the line of scrimmage in that BCS title matchup, that is going to be a ticket you're going to want to watch and buy and see and get down to, even though, from what I hear early on, very tough ticket to get right now. Got out the hookup, man. Graham inside the 10 yard line. Call me, bro. I, I got you. And we talked about this a week ago, too, didn't we? When we looked at Penn State and Wisconsin, we yes. looked at the top of the BCS, and you just look at the cyclical nature of this game. You don't like to see Graham there trying to and maybe just get his fleet on. But the cyclical nature of this game and how that big, physical, pro style, a pro style that's fit perfectly for that city of Pittsburgh that Paul Chris talked about. Look at Alabama. Look at LSU. Look at Georgia. Look at these teams at the top of the BCS right now. Look at Notre Dame and what what Brian Kelly has done in scratching a lot of that wing it all over the place. Throw it 50 times up tempo. That power style that run game and play great defense. Third and seven and Graham takes it inside the 10 to about the eight yard line. Yeah with uh, that spread option stuff being the fad or the rage in college football. It's interesting to see those teams you mentioned near the top of the BCS standings doing it with a more pro style approach and I think the, the important point there Mark is not everybody can do that the elite institutions that I just referenced they can recruit the best linemen in the supply and demand chain there's a whole lot more receivers and DBs and running backs and there are the big difference makers and tight ends and fullbacks but the elite schools right now at the top of the BCS rankings they're recruiting them they're getting them they're growing them and it's leading to a lot of wins on fourth down since Siri hands it off to Graham Graham going to be stopped up. I'm not sure that he got enough for the first down. It's going to be close, and it looks like they will give it to him. Give that right foot spot. And he got it. At the three-yard line, it'll be first down and goal. I think a chance here. I don't think Skip Holt's going to call timeouts. Probably a chance to run the best formation in football if you're an offensive guy. One. That's yeah. right. 
Pittsburgh can improve to six and six on the season and three and four in conference play. That guy right there, Paul Chris, the first year head coach, taking over from Todd Graham, who left abruptly last year for Arizona State. Quite a bit to build on in year one, isn't there? If you're a Pitt Panther fan, it's not always pretty this season. And it sure would have been a different story on a national landscape if you make that 33 yard field going overtime in South Bend. But if I'm a Pitt Panther fan through the ups and the downs and the instability of the last few seasons, I think this guy, like Bill O'Brien down the road at Penn State, I think he fits this program and their yeah. recruiting style and what they want to do long term really, really well. And for some of the players who are the leaders, Chris, through the eyes and prism of Sinceri and Graham, two of the leaders, they saw, they call Coach Chris a, a, a great teacher who prepares us for every possibility on and off the field and to come in and in year one to to get this team to where they are is pretty good accomplishment not the way you always want to get there if you're athletic director Steve Peterson and you've gone Mike Haywood and the Todd Graham and but when you land on the right guy who I think is going to build this thing and be there for the long haul a good win getting to a bowl and taking care of business tonight this one is cooked glazed and about to be sliced folks 27 to 3 as Pittsburgh becomes bowl eligible. Their sixth win of the season. And their fifth consecutive bowl game potentially. Meanwhile, South Florida falling to 3 and 9. A disappointing year for them. 1 and 6 overall in conference playing a big day for Shanahan. Back with more on the other side. by virtue of a 27-3 win. In the words of Skip Holtz, he said, hey, this year has been like an ugly baby, but it's our ugly baby. At least he's owned it. Pittsburgh, meanwhile, is sixth win of the season. Big night from quarterback Sal Sinceri, 19-25, 211 yards. Final score, 27-3. Coming up next, it's SportsCenter. For Brock Hewitt and Quinn Kessnett, John Mark Jones saying goodnight from Tampa.